Kazakh people say a son-in-law is a relative for a hundred years, a parents-in-law are relatives for a thousand years. What is the meaning of presenting expensive gifts to each other? We will answer this and other questions within half an hour. Hello, dear viewers, you are watching Kazakh Live Duster with Tamara Asar. Today we invited an ethnographer, a specialist who knows everything about the Kazakh traditions, Daulet Zhailubayev. Since today's theme is related to parents-in-law, I immediately want to ask a question. Why do Kazakhs keep saying a son-in-law is a relative for 100 years, but parents-in-law are relatives for 1,000 years? Thank you. The Kazakh society uses the expression a son-in-law is a relative for 100 years, but parents-in-law are relatives for 1,000 years. This means that two families strengthen relative ties. Those ties between co-in-laws are not limited to relationship within one family. Their alliance finds its continuation for a thousand years. The relationships last from generation to generation. <laughs> It should be noted that a law exists on prohibiting marriage between family members up to the seventh generation. The scientists and the sources of the 19th century say that besides the Kazakhs, other nations also prohibit marriage up to 13th, 14th generation. Let me pour you some tea. The Kazakhs have several titles of parents in law. Can you tell about this? Bil Kuda is related to fathers in law, who are friends and not married. Don't have children, but they agree on marriage of their future children. In other words, they agree to become relatives long before the birth of their children. The next is Bisakuda. Two fathers in law, being friends for a long time, are determined to marry their newborn children. And strengthen friendship by marriage for centuries. The difference between these two types of co in laws. Is that within Bil Kuda, fathers in law don't present expensive gifts to each other? Since the parties agreed initially, the wedding is held as usual. But Bis Kuda, fathers in law, agree the other way. The amount of the Kalin Mal is relatively small and it is paid out gradually. The engagement is held differently as well. First, two families learn about each other, get acquainted. Only after this, the parties hold the ceremony of engagement. Two families first learn about each other. They get acquainted in advance with the bride's family to know what tribe she's referred to. That is, they learn what village she's from, what is her tribe. After that, the groom's side send a message deliverer who is skillful in making arrangements, an orator who knows the rights. Only after some discussions, the engagement is held. In other words, the bride's relatives don't agree on marriage so quickly. 
Brilliant. Groom's relatives need to pass through all the stages. How many family members should go to the bride's home on the day of marriage agreement? In general, four or five people are sent to bride's parents agree on marriage. There are a few honored people, bees, who decide important issues of the upcoming wedding. Are they relatives of the groom? Yes, they are groom's relatives. The bride's side meets guests. Some moments should be clarified. The Kazakhs have the ceremony Sirgasalum, when the relatives of a groom offer earrings to a bride. I grew up in the western Kazakhstan, and as a child we noticed that first only two or three men who are the groom's relatives come without women. But then on Sirgasalu ceremony only women come to present earrings to the bride. By tradition, this is a rule, but presently, men as well as women agree on a certain aspect of wedding planning. Is this right? The Turkic people have such tradition. It turns out that our rituals undergo changes. Since traditions require proper interpretation, I would like to make some conclusions on information you have said. According to the custom, two or three men go to the bride's parents' home to agree on engagement arrangements. The ceremony of putting on earrings to the bride is held afterwards. First, in order to express groom's intentions, most influential relatives are sent. The groom's father doesn't participate in the discussion. In case the parties and the bride's father have agreed on wedding preparation, the next ceremony of presenting earrings to the bride is held. This ceremony includes other members of the family. Yeah. Yes, there is a special rite where the issue of Kalanmal is solved. An agreement on bride price is held in accordance with the financial opportunities of the parties. The issue of bride price is the basic principle of marriage settlement because all subsequent ceremonies take place after Khalan Mal. Therefore, the issues of dowry, wedding, and gifts are settled depending on bride price. Khalan Mal plays an essential role in the Kazakh society. Kazakh people revere rituals inherited from ancestors. Therefore, they follow all the rules relating to bride price. Two families have to pass several stages of engagement before uniting family ties. There are certain provisions concerning bride price. These conditions cover all the possible situations during the engagement. They even imply the death of a bride or a groom before the wedding. People often face hardships followed by happiness. During the engagement, the elders of the tribe clans and fathers-in-law take into account all the issues, think out all the nuances. Daulet Jailobayev raises a very serious question. We have to listen because such situations happen in life. Many people do not know about this. If before the marriage but after the engagement a groom or bride dies, then certain steps are taken. If a bride dies, her father returns bride prize or gives his youngest daughter. In marriage to the groom. In this case, the groom's family pays additional bride price. It should be noted that the eldest daughter cannot be given in marriage in this situation. It is forbidden. If the groom dies, then the bride marries the brother of the deceased groom. Am I right? The bride is given in marriage to the brother of the deceased groom. The Kazakh people say it a manger, but the bride may refuse. In this case, her family returns Khalun Mang. The bride price plays an essential role in the Kazakh engagement. 
Honestly, these rituals are based on educational purpose. Whereas the parties agreed on Kalan Mal, they must certainly fulfill it, be responsible for it. I wish people don't face hardships. May our children be healthy. Let the newly married couple live long. God save us all. Daulet, there is a ritual of presenting the liver with tail fat to parents-in-law. Now we specially cooked the liver wrapped in tail fat. I would like to discuss this ritual. I'll pour you some tea. We can say that the liver wrapped in tail fat is the main dish which is included in the engagement ritual. It is an essential part of the ceremony. This ritual carries also educational meaning. The ritual consolidates the acquaintance for further close relationship ties. It means newly arrived relatives are as close as the liver. And as sweet as tail fat. No engagement passes without this meal. The bride price is given once and family ties will last forever. Since it's not easy to become relatives with someone else's family, I suppose two family members had to follow all the above rituals. I wish all the engagement and rituals are held successfully, without misunderstandings. Let the future life of newlyweds be as tasty as the main dish of engagement. May there be many festive events. Let the families be friendly and may children be healthy. Thank you, Dawlet, for visiting our studio. Thank you for answering our questions. Come again. Let's taste the main dish of parents-in-law. Thank you. We continue our program Kazakh Live Duster in the wedding center Svadba Dat Kizet. The next guest of our studio is Guzira Aydarbekova. A mother of the country's top singer Kairat Nurtas. She's an experienced mother-in-law who knows the Kazakh rituals very well. Welcome to our program. Hello. Let me remind you that our theme today is dedicated to engagement relations between parents-in-law. Have you had any difficulties in this regard? Tell us about interesting situations concerning engagement. I have two daughters-in-law. I held engagement ceremonies twice. My eldest daughter-in-law is Juldis. When Kairat and Juldis married, they were too young, only 18 years old. Although Juldis is the third daughter in the family, she was the first to get married. Her parents held the engagement ceremony for the first time. Therefore, all of us were very excited and we worried a lot. Kairat was in love with Juldis. Then I invited her mother to a restaurant to get to know each other better. To tell about our families, I came to the restaurant with Kairat and Juldis came with her mother. Everything was decided there according to the right. The co mother in law did not require a large bride price. We only had good intentions. We wished happiness for our children. So the wedding met all the Kazakh rituals. I think it's a great deed to give in marriage a child at the age of 18. My second daughter in law is Agiri. My younger son, Ayan, fell in love with her being a school student at the age of 13. He was always proud of her. He defended her honor. She's a kind girl. We decided to meet her parents and invited them to a restaurant. Agirim and Ayan went with us. We became friendly from the first conversation. They're good-natured people. <laughs> 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 
from that moment, we began to prepare for the wedding ceremony according to the common customs. We also intended to follow the corresponding traditions. Before the engagement, did you know about the traditions and customs? Order of presenting gifts to the parents-in-law. I lived in Shymkent. You know, people in the southern region adhere very much to the traditions. I saw the ceremonies for many times. I knew the customs related to the wedding and preparation to the engagement. But the rites differ in other regions. For example, I was in Atirao. We were sent to make wedding agreements for my sister's daughter. We were supposed to be met festively according to the custom, but they met us as simple guests. We were confused and had some troubles, but at lunch preparations for the ceremony began. They cooked meat, began to lay out a rich dastarkhan. They served us exclusive meals. People in this region have different rules, which is strange for us. In the western part of our country, people do not prepare in advance. Also, before the birth of a child, they do not prepare a cradle for him. They don't prepare before the ceremony. They wait until the guests come, listen to what they say, make some agreements. After this, they begin preparation for the ceremony and cook special meal for guests. But everything is different in Shymkent. The family prepares for the engagement ceremony thoroughly. Someone even repair own houses, buy new furniture. They're supposed to meet guests with honor. Even neighbors, little children prepare for the event. They help to cook delicious dishes, clean everything. Even if the bride does not agree, her parents all the way hold such preparations. What will be if the bride refuses to marry? If the bride refuses, it will be a shame. But there were not such cases. Yes, it will be a shame. Some people found immediately another girl for marriage. The destiny of another girl may be decided or ruined. Yes. According to the custom, Bitashar, ceremony must be held. A bride's face is covered with a scarf. The ceremony revealing a bride's face is called Bitashar. Yes, you're right. Yes, Bitashar is held always before the wedding. And what about Kalun Mal? The bride price is an essential part of the engagement. Yes, Kalun Mal for the bride is one of our oldest traditions. Someone says that in Shimken, bride price is very expensive. When I was young, the size of Kalun Mal included a sheep and ulitere that is present to revere deceased people. Then there was Tohuzdeh, the gifts to nine family members. Preparing these gifts, the groom's parents went to the bride's family and received the blessing. Kalun Mal in the amount of $10,000 is returned while presenting furniture as part of a dowry. In addition to this, the bride's dowry is repaid twice. The bride price also included these gifts to relatives. Yes, people adhered to such a rule in the past. That is, in the past, Kalimal amounted to $10,000, including Tohuzduk and Ulutera gifts. I would like to ask you, during the engagement and other ceremonies, such as, for example, Kilin Shai, when the daughter-in-law serves tea for guests and while establishing relationship with new relatives, you presented gifts. Have you ever been upset by your gift? Were parents of the daughter-in-law delighted with gifts? Maybe presents have been changed by mistake and presented to another person. Such cases may occur sometimes. Were there any misunderstandings during the wedding process? Presently, the special list of presents is made up. The list of presents is necessary. The bride's family gives us the list and we provide the one. In the past, no one looked at sizes. Parents prepared their children for this rite. Usually, a standard coat was presenting to the bride's father, as well as other clothes. Shoes as well. For example, a suit or trousers could be presented. Nobody paid much attention to the size of clothes. But presently, the families have to strictly follow the list and requirements. For example, the eldest of the families presented a chapan of the appropriate size. In the past, the ritual Kid Girazu was held. My elder parents-in-law are wonderful people. In general, my co-mother-in-law is like an angel for me because she became closer to me than my brothers. She always prays for me. She always defends me. We're very close friends. More than 10 years have passed since we united family ties. During this 13 years, we never got upset with each other. 
Kuvarim. I try always to meet her requests. When I call her and ask her to come to my home, she immediately comes. She's a good-hearted person. I always try to help her as much as possible. We rest in the recreation centers together. I spent my vacations with her. I dreamt to have such a co-mother-in-law. Maybe there were some misunderstandings, but they aren't significant. When my grandchildren are born, I'm supposed to choose their names. I want my grandchildren to have unusual, remarkable names. They say that the name determines the future of a person. Therefore, I want their names to be meaningful, unusual. The first granddaughter's name is Yazem, and she's a tender-hearted girl. Also, I gave names Alao, Narkul, to other grandchildren. Alao means passion, fire. Wonderful. So we gave my grandson the name of Narkul, so that he becomes the leader. When my second grandson was born, Sizim asked her father to give him the name of Abulai Khan. My son decided to name Khan, so that he also becomes a leader. Kairat gave the name to his son. Did your husband give names? No, Kairat named his younger son, but I chose the names to all my grandchildren. It's very interesting. My mother liked the name Akhmor. She always dreamt her daughters to have such name. I asked her the meaning of this name. She replied that a newborn lamp has distinctive white spots like a seal. A newborn child has also such white lanugo or white spots. I always remembered it. When my younger granddaughter was born, I wanted to name her Akhmor. My son Ayan and my daughter-in-law were against of this name. Akhmor also in the Kazakh means white print. Once a co-mother-in-law came to my house, she proposed another name, but I refused. She was upset as well as my daughter-in-law, but it was my decision. You had misunderstandings. Yes, maybe she was offended, but she began to search in the internet, offering all possible names. In the end, I said, this is my family, my granddaughter. The Kazakhs have such a right. The names to grandchildren should be given by their father's parents. It's the rule. Later, the co-mother-in-law went to her father. She is a very well-read man, a writer. She asked him about the name of our granddaughter. He was very impressed by this name because it's a rare and unique name. After this, the mother of my daughter-in-law was glad. She blessed our granddaughter and we gave the name Akhmor. We remember this situation with pleasure. It's wonderful, Guzira. Let the new family ties find its continuation for a thousand years. Be happy and friendly. May our grandchildren grow healthy and smart. Thank you. Thank you for coming to our program, The Kazakhs Revere Traditions That Were Passed Down Through Generations. Parents-in-law have to respect each other. It's very essential to parents-in-law to be friendly because they pass down this tradition to following generation, teaching them to respect relatives. You watch the Kazakh Live Dester program with Tamara Asar.